Hello everyone, and welcome to my seventh and final video in my series from our 2017 Crossing Newfoundland by ATV trip. And this particular day we drove from Robinson's to Porta Basque. That trip can be short because if you follow the rail bed here directly without making any side stops or anything like that, it's only a little over 100 kilometers. So you could do that in a short time if you want to. My friends and I, we want to rather do some exploring if we can and stretch it out and see as many beautiful things as we can. So I'll show you what we do basically. I'll zoom in here to Robinson's now. Part of our group stayed here at the Pirate's Haven and part of us stayed over at Cliffside Cabin just because there was 12 of us. First thing in the morning after we ate, uh, we get up and hit this trail here that takes us down to a gas station right in the middle of Robinson's. Then after we get gas, we jump on this orange trail, which takes us up around this bluff. And the view you get of these cliffside bluffs here is just amazing. And you'll see it in the video. After we're done that, we follow this trail, which takes us out to a beach down here. And we kind of drive up here and down here a little bit and take some pictures. Then we head back onto this trail. We follow it through up to uh, Pirate's Haven again, come back out to the rail bed. Now, uh, for those of you who are interested in camping, um, if you want to camp in this area, uh, this bridge here, there's a trail on either end of it. I think there's a trail on this side and then there's a trail on the other side that will take you down into the to the gravel down here on the beach. And uh, you could put you could like pitch a tent pretty much anywhere through here if you want to. Uh, I would say just make sure you're close to the edges in case of the tide and that type of thing. And um, it's really nice. It's a really nice view. Someday or some year our friends and I are going to camp in there. So then we head out. We follow the rail bed and usually in the last couple of years one of our first stops here is Codroy Pond it's really pretty in here um, there's a there's a trail right off the rail bed brings you right in here now I know uh, in the last few years there's been an issue with some land ownership with a gentleman that has some property in the area and he dug up uh, a bit of the trail right here when you come in uh, but you can get around that um, there's a road right back here. You can see it. That kind of brings you in around here and it still brings you into the lake. Just make sure that when you leave, you take anything with you that you took in. Don't leave any garbage behind. And then we head back out, follow the rail bed. And then this year for 2017, this was a new route we took. We took this red trail here. It's a uh, nine and a half kilometers. And then it took us out to an outlook at the top of a mountain peak up here. It's really nice. And what we did we actually did have our barbecue here. We had some fish and some leftover meat and things from the week. We cooked it up. And then after we did that, we took the rail, this uh, trail back out. This trail is not very difficult to get through. It's, uh, it's basically a road. It's, uh, there's a lot of rocks on it. Nothing really big. And then uh, we followed the rail bed again over to this section. This was also new for us this year with this trail here that we found. Just follow my GPS tracks. Easy to get to. And it's only um, 4.7 kilometers. It's pretty steep though, so you're going to want to put it in probably four low and go up this hill. And just take your time, you know, there's nothing, you're in no hurry. You probably do about 15 or 20 kilometers an hour. And when you get to the top up here, there's some really, really nice views as well as you can see from the, some of the pictures I have up here. Then we followed back down. Now this year we missed out on one place I wanted to go to just because we, let, we started too late. And... Um, we ran out of time, but this red trail that I have marked here that says Trail to Little Codroy Pond, um, that's all I have of the trail. That's all I know how to get in there so far. But apparently um, a couple people told me once you come in this far, it's not difficult to find the rest of your way into the lake here or the pond because um, you can actually see the trail, I guess, once you're there in person and follow it in. It takes you into this beach area here. And then if you look at Co Little Codroy Pond, even on this area, you can see there's some really beautiful mountains all around here and you have a nice view of that it would probably be really nice in the fall too um, so we're going to try that this year we haven't tried it yet then we're going to come back out follow the rail bed and there's two mountain peaks you can come in down here this one's really simple to uh, follow once you're following the rail bed you're going to see uh, this structure here this building structure it, all, it looks like an old house basically made out of concrete just veer up here up the hill and it's only, let's see here, 1.7 kilometers. And this is the view that you get here of that valley. It's just beautiful. And it's low enough that if it's cloudy or foggy, you can still see the mountains there and uh, that view, which is really nice. Now, if you take this other route over here, it's about eight kilometers to get to the top. This is the view. 
it's quite beautiful. It's the opposite view you're seeing out over the ocean. But this mountain peak over here is quite a bit taller. And you can tell from the rail bed when you're traveling down here if it's clouded in. And if, you're, if it happens to be clouded in, don't even bother going up because you won't see anything. We did it one year. We went up just to check it out and you can't see anything. Um, so then we kept going straight. You're going to drive right through JT Cheeseman Provincial Park which is a really beautiful beach. And uh, if you get here, if you time it kind of right, you get there during the sunset hours uh, when you get in the evening. Uh, it's really, really nice. And it's not far from Port of Basque. So when you get there, you know you're almost done the trip and uh, brings you right into town. When you're coming in, the end of the rail bed, basically there's a, an orange train right here, an old rail car. When you hit that, you know that the, you've hit the end of the trail. And... Um, what we usually do is come in and uh, we ride up the road here a bit up to town and uh, go into Mary Brown's or Tim Hortons to get a bite to eat before we go to the ferry terminal because we have lots of hours to kill. We always take the overnight ferry, which doesn't leave until 10 to midnight. Now, if you come in here, you'll see there's a gas station right across the street from the rail bed. Here's the, where the rail bed continues on through here. So there's a dirt trail along the shoulder of the road that you can follow that will take you out into the ferry yard. Now, or you can drive on the road. This green trail here is about uh, three and a half kilometers and shows you how you can get to the ferry terminal by taking the highway to get in there. And uh, if some people I know that have done this trip, they kind of plan it so that they get in and then they spend the night there and then they leave the first thing in the ferry uh, the next morning. If you want to do that, St. Christopher's Hotel is right here. As you can see, it's pretty close. This is a ferry yard. This yellow trail, rather, uh, that I have listed here will show you how to cross the street and get right into the ferry area without even having to drive on much of the roads. And uh, it's a pretty convenient little spot for you. So that's what we do for this day. And uh, I'll show you the video now. I hope you like it. Let's go get some gasoline. Bye-bye, Pirate Haven. After getting up and packing all of our gear, we went down to the main building there, the main restaurant, and they gave us a big breakfast. And uh, we're heading back on the trail, which goes right by the cabins, and then it takes us down to a gas station. And then across the street from the gas station is the uh, Robinson's Head Bluff area. It's the way we start the trip first thing in the morning. We got, I got 150 on here, and we might do a bit of exploring today. Yeah, what do you see the view up here, man?
What's that? Are we going back up there? Yes, we have to go back up there. Turn around, Bob wants a picture. Nice boss through here. fishing in there. There's the Trans Canada over to the right. There's a lot of smooth sections like this between Robinsons and Port of Basque where you can just, you know, truck along at 45, 50 kilometers an hour, no problem. Nice and smooth, not too many whoops. This section here now, uh, there were some down power line towers, and these guys were in uh, fixing it up. Well, I don't know. I don't think so. And we could have got around them. That big truck was in the way, but they said it would be uh, about maybe. 15 minutes, but all we had to do was go to the left here, jump on the highway, and well, I think we, we only had to drive about here. 200 meters to get around them to get back on the trail. This little section I'm going in here is kind of a bit of a bypass trail that takes you into Codroy Pond. Uh, if you were looking at the beginning there where I had shown you on the map, there's uh, someone dug a hole with an excavator uh, where the main trail takes you in there. And this is kind of, uh, that's it there on the right with the tape around it. This little trail here gets you around that so you can get into that nice pond. I read a news article where it said the man who had dug the hole there was ordered by the government to fill it back in to give access to the lake. But uh, he hasn't yet, as far as I know. And uh, I'm not sure what the cause of this, uh, the dispute is, but uh, whatever it is, I hope that the parties involved can work it out because it's just too nice of a lake to uh, try to keep people from going in there. I really like this lake. I think maybe in a year or two we're going to do a west coast trip, start in Port Basque and work our way up here, and this would be a really nice uh, place to arrange to have a campfire or something like that and a pitch a tent. What a spa, huh? We were only here uh, just for a few minutes and took a look around and took a few photos and then we went back on the trail. Then uh, right after this, we went to the uh, that section I showed you earlier where it was a mountain road that took us up to the top of a mountain where we had uh, some nice pictures again and we stopped and ate lunch there. I think we uh, stayed here for about 45 minutes or so for lunch, uh, pan fried up some food. Uh, man, the guys really know how to cook, and this stuff tasted great. Uh, they chowed down like Cookie Monster, and then we headed off to the uh, next mountain site. First, we had to drive the rail bed for a little bit, and then we took that uh, narrow trail, uh, steep trail, to get up to the next mountain. We were pretty much on the home stretch when Paul blew his back left tire. Same tire that uh, Bruce was having problems with all week. And I think Ernest had a flat in his back left tire too. So uh, we pulled out the jack, jacked up his vehicle there, pulled his tire off, put the spare wheel on, and we were done in probably less than 10 minutes.
that was a lot of fun up there in the mountains. Um, we're not done with the mountains yet, right along the coast here. We're actually not too far from Port of Bass, and we're going to go down the road here a little bit, and then we're going to uh, take another trail up to the Sugarloaf Mountains, and you'll see that uh, just coming up here in a second. And the view from up there is really nice, as you can see here coming over this road. And uh, the other side, you can uh, you can go up to those mountains. You can see in the background as well, but uh, it's no, there's no point today because of all the fog and the mist up there. What do you think, Ernest? Awesome. Love it. Doesn't get much better, does it? No, it's pretty nice up here. Oh, yeah. On top of the world for the fourth time today. On <laughs> top of the world for the fourth time. Slowly. Okay, we're on our way back down that mountain trail, back down to the main rail bed, and you can see it kind of in the background there. It's not too far. Um, and it's amazing how when you're riding on those roads, you can't really get, you can't get a feeling for how really steep those are. That hill we came down, I mean, it wasn't treacherous or anything by any means, but it was definitely a lot steeper than it looked in the video. And uh, so now we're going to head towards Port of Basque, and we'll make a stop first at, uh, at uh, JT Cheeseman Park. I can't believe somebody drove all the way out here in a car. That must have been a rough ride.
So at this point in the trip, we're only minutes away from Port of Basque, and that means the trip is almost over. And it's kind of a downer because even though we've been doing this trip for a week, nobody really wanted it to end. We had so much fun. And there's always somebody who jokes at the end of this trip, when we get to the very end of the trail, somebody usually says, hey, let's turn around and go back and do it all over again and go back the other way. And uh, so that gives you an idea how much fun the guys have on this type of trip. In case you wonder why I keep swiping at the camera lens there, it's just because in this type of weather it's a little misty and dust is coming off the trail and it can make the GoPro housing case dirty. This section is the highway leading to the ferry terminal. That's it kind of in the background there. And uh, we're done with the rail bed. We just had something to eat and uh, this is the very last stretch heading in towards the ferry terminal. And once we get to the ferry terminal, uh, we book in, get our tickets, and then they make you go through this uh, big garage where they spray down your bikes. They take like a fire hose to it to make sure they spray down any kind of mud and stuff like that. They don't want you to bring back uh, there's some kind of bug here, I think, a potato bug or something they don't want you to bring back to the mainland, so they wash down your machines for that. Oh. Looks nice and shiny already. Yeah, it looks like, yeah. 